All right, everyone, welcome to another video. Today, we're gonna to be reacting to another Locks and Noggin video, uh, continuing on or Cascade Region reaction series that we've got going on. And this, sadly, this is the last episode that is out as of recording this video. There's going to be apparently one more video regarding Cascade that's gonna be coming out in a time that has not been made public. So uh, this is probably gonna be the last Cascade Region video that we have for a little bit of time. So if you wanna support the channel and you know you just want to show your support and your love for this series dropping a like goes a very long way also make sure that you subscribe if you're new and you got the notifications on uh because when a nationals video goes live wait it's been a while since i've said this holy crap you gotta stop drop get your snacks and enjoy the show now uh this is going to be about ultra beasts so first of all uh, we reacted to the plot video last episode, and that was quite interesting. That was an amazingly, beautifully created video. And at the very end, if you remember, we got a bit of a teaser of the Ultra Beast. Not really a teaser, like we know what they look like, we know what their names are and what they do, uh, but we didn't really get the, the details. So in this video, we're gonna be getting the details. But anyways, enough talking. We have a giveaway going on for Legends Arceus. Make sure that she, uh, you know, uh, join that it'll be in the description also uh, follow my other channels because in this week i'm going to be uploading every single day on all three of them so i'm working really hard the support really would mean a lot uh but anyways let's begin this let's go ah oh, i feel so relieved that i finally posted that hour-long cascade plot video a little while back <sighs> And with that, I introduced a few Lockemon, like Golgar. Oh yeah, I remember that. For reasons, I'll save their explanation for another video. Today, oh. we're talking about the post-game legendaries. Oh yeah, he did say that. And uh, I think it was the, it was like two videos ago, I think. He said that he was going to, uh, the last video in the Cascade series, which is going to be to finish up the Pokemon that he hasn't explained yet. Um... My voice kind of died a little bit there. I mean, I, I'm not emotional or anything, but man, it's been, a, it's been a journey, dude. Holy crap. These orb ultra beasts. To be honest, I wasn't originally intending on them being ultra beasts, just sort of eldritch Pokemon from deep space, and I guess to a point they still are? They aren't quite as out there and wacky in their design as most ultra beasts, but they mm. are still certainly otherworldly. They're, they're definitely uh, a little wacky. I like them a lot, man, especially that uh, the goat one with the mini eyes. That, that thing looks sick, dude. So let's go ahead and just go with them being ultra beasts. And let's go over the origins and inspirations and the goings on of all six of them. Yeah, that's this video. Diavolo, what's going on here? <laughs> the here we go. <laughs> ultra beast is the common ultra beast found even before the post game. It's Orbthalod. Oh, Interestingly, okay. they have always been in the Cascade region, if you ask. Yeah, I was about to say, like, we've seen a couple Orbthalods throughout the region. So this whole time they were ultra beasts. I knew they definitely had a connection to the ultra beasts, obviously, since they kind of made the whole plan to bring them to the world. Um, but I didn't know that they were actual ultra beasts in them them like themselves right um that's really cool I, this design I, I never really took the time to really talk about it but it is very eerie and it has like this really cool aesthetic to it dude i love the way this pokemon works it, my phone fell my phone fell again you know what listen <laughs> anyway <laughs> we're doing it live baby no cutting anyways i i don't know i really like it Ask anyone about them, though photo, textbook, and fossil records for them seem to disappear around the end of the 20th century as if they just suddenly appeared. Oh well, if you ask anybody, they've just always been here. Oh, okay. They've always been great, and it sure is neat and interesting how important people always have one. Oh well. I don't it's though. So Orbthalod, all of these beasties really, but especially Orbthalod, pull from Lovecraftian horror, eldritch horror, a genre of horror that is, interestingly, out of all of the states, most popular in Oregon, and Washington is where oh. it's the third most popular. Perhaps it has to do with all of the rainy weather here. Hmm. So, I wanted an Elder God-inspired super legendary of sorts, Ultra Necrozma tier, which is what led to the mind-flaying shenanigans that Endrum Odai causes, as well as Orbthalog. Such a cool thing. name. Its name pulls from Orb, like the magical wizard's <sighs> orb, Cephalopod, <laughs> 
Orthology, which is the study of words as it knows human language and can plant words into people's heads. Ooh. And Elder God, Orbthalod, Elder God. Orbthalod is a psychic dark type space octopus spider thing that floats. They can't take- It's kind of like a Malamar on crack. Like y'all remember that Malamar episode in X and Y, bro. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like a like a mag a magmar. Did I say magmar? No, I, I said Malamar, right? Yeah, it's kind of like a Malamar on crack. I like that a lot, actually. That's really cool. Total control of minds, but they can make memories incredibly fuzzy and give commands not through strict control, but through suggestion. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be suggestion. Suggest. Suggested. They would. They wouldn't be suggesting me anything. though. I'm too built crazy like that. They wouldn't be able to do nothing. That's why none of them mess with me. You see. You see. You see the vision, right? I know y'all see the vision. As they reduce inhibitions. In the plot video, it was revealed that Tom Bezel's main mon is an Orbthalod, and perhaps not by choice. And while oh. Tom is for sure a shady businessman absolutely bordering on evil, his Orbthalod pushes him closer and closer to his own definitions of a monster. Nah. They do this for a reason. The Orbthalods <laughs> are scouts for their master, much like Tomunk and Temunk are for theirs. The Orbthalods are trying to get the soul energy needed to open a portal to eventually get Endrum Odai through. Just as they did in ancient times before being stopped by the ancient great Thunderbird. They do. So are we like ever going to see the actual Thunderbirds like original design? Because obviously we saw um, Omega Rogon. I think that was his name. It's, it's Omega Rogon, right? We've already seen what that looks like. And it's supposed to be based off the Thunderbird. Uh, I hope maybe like we could get like a, a cool. Uh, this this is this is just complete just wishful thinking. But maybe like after the game's out, maybe like a year later, we could get like a DLC where you could go back in time and see the events that occurred. I don't know. I think that would be really cool. But I know that would be a lot of work to, uh, to do. I just want to see what the original Thunderbird uh, look like. Maybe we did see it. I don't think I don't think so though. I'm pretty sure we've only seen a silhouette the whole time. This clearly through manipulating powerful people and Pokemon, pulling the strings, much like many Illuminati conspiracies or Eldritch cults. Now, as for why an Ooh, octopus, transition. it should be fairly straightforward. Cthulhu is the most famous of the Elder Gods, and Mind Flayers also have octopus faces. And I also wanted to reference the Tree Octopus, a hoax-turned-cryptid in the Pacific Northwest, and mix in some octopus spider elements in there too. It uses the orb inside its head to levitate and power its mind powers. They say getting someone to stare into the orb is what grants it access to your mind. And like any elder or wizard, it has a long beard made of tentacles. And its head is Yay. tall and pointy, like a wizard's hat. The glowing spots not only reference bioluminescent cephalopods, but also the lights, or dead lights, or fairy lights. Basically, the lights that people see because their brains cannot comprehend the true form of an eldritch entity. Also, before we move on, have you noticed that a lot of Cascadian Mon reference mind manipulation and mind control? It's in part as a means of foreshadowing the events of the post game and- That is true. There are a lot of psychic types or just Pokemon in general uh, that have a lot of mind control elements in the Cascade region. That's very cool. Just because the mystical Mount Spectal, with its ability to open the hearts, minds, and souls of those around it, would clearly have an impact of the evolution on local Mon. Even the Great Thunderbird. The Great Thunderbird fights off the majority of them with its immense power and even commands some to leave. And they listen. Now, considering Orbthalot has tricked everyone into thinking it's always been here, it wouldn't have a UB name, much like the Light Trio. And now, okay. let's skip over the Cataclysmic Quartet and head straight for Endrum Odai. I wanted a Cataclysmic post game. Pokemon has already referenced Ragnarok on a few occasions, and I happen to be a bit of a Bible nerd, so I immediately jumped into the Bible's end-of-the-world prophecies, mostly from Revelation. Okay. It's fitting, too, as the U.S., especially Eastern Oregon and Idaho, are extremely Christian. But with this, I didn't want to just reference the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. That's, that is where I thought this was going. Or I think, I, I think, what, what did I think was good? I think I was... 
was the fourth horseman of apocalypse i think because one of the their names is pestilence right i don't i don't know i i, I might be thinking of something else <laughs> because that's way too easy and two because some interpret the white horseman as jesus himself and i don't want to get that direct you know okay <laughs> and then i remembered an end of the world conspiracy theory from a few years back one that legitimately creeped me out a bit According to the Bible and astrology, Armageddon will happen on September 23rd, oh. 2017. Oh! Guys, we're gonna die four years in the past! No! <laughs> that is because this recently discovered Red Dragon Nebula that the government and Google don't want you to know about because they're controlled by the devil is passing by some <laughs> constellations in exactly the right way that the Bible says that it will, and that will trigger Armageddon. It was actually a pretty eerie read, much like SCPs, but of course, astrology is bunk, and we're all still here. And the Bible also though? says nobody will know when Armageddon will happen. So like anyone that claims that they figured it out, like, do you really think you're smarter than God? How faithful are you? Anyway, it is still one of my favorite biblical predictions gone awry. And plus, this nebula is pretty creepy, honestly. So I decided we needed to make that the big bad. This face has been watching the Earth for who knows how long, biding its time, staring with its piercing. That's so cool. I never noticed like the, the freaking astrology things on its body. Oh, that's so cool. Green eyes and red body. And of course, because it's the red dragon of Revelation, it needs to be dragon type. And we combined that with fairy type. Together, they sort of embody infinity energy as a whole. Yeah. space and magic as a whole even and also dragon mon tends to be more masculine and fairy mon more feminine and i wanted to reference the magnum opus in alchemy the greatest work which in alchemic illustration is symbolized by a hermaphrodite on top of a dragon the male and female perfectly combined the physical and spiritual perfectly combined <laughs> This is this is getting real deep, bro. This is getting real After deep, all, dude. Whichever alchemist completes the magnum opus will become immortal and godlike. Some even claimed they would be equivalent in power to the Christian god in some cases. And perhaps power like that is the goal of this mysterious UB infinity, oh. aka Endram Odai. Whoa. So that name, oh. it's an odd one. I wanted. I don't know. I, I really thought we were going to get some creepy, like, transition or something to take over the screen. I, I don't know. It's kind of anticlimactic. Endram Odai. And then nothing happened. I was like, oh. <laughs> you know? It's just me, the anticipation, you know? To invoke alien and eldritch naming schemes for sure. But I also wanted it to softly reference a few things, like the Magnum Opus. And Drum Odai, same sort of syllables and the end of Magnum, beginning of Opus. And Drum Odai, Magnum Opus. I, I, I get it. I also wanted it to sound a bit like Andromeda. Andromedae. Andromeda. Andromeda is our closest neighboring galaxy. And also, the Andromeda constellation in Greek myth tells the tale of a woman being eaten by a sea monster. Oh! Some depict this sea monster as a dragon, while others depict it as a whale or giant fish sometimes both and also that very same constellation in the far east is known as the fairy constellation oh that's so sick perfectly fitting of its type and origins and all that and if you didn't put it together already that greek tale of andromeda it's very similar to the tale of the red dragon in revelation a red dragon is threatening to eat a woman and her child and also red dragon Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Rather than breathing fire, it spews water like a raging river. Oh. Perhaps another connection to sea monsters, eh? This red dragon in Revelation is said to have seven heads with seven crowns. So Andromodai has seven sets. Wait, holy eyes. crap. Is that what the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds dragon is based off of? Like the red dragon? If, if y'all ever watched um, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, I never finished it, but I know like the general plot. I don't know why I mentioned this in a Pokemon video, but it just hit me because was, I think there was like seven people that had the connect connection to the Crimson Dragon. I don't think this has any correlation to what's going on at all, but it just suddenly hit me. I was like, wait, I should finish five D's. I'm gonna finish five D's. All right, I don't know what that has to do with this. Each <laughs> with little ears of sorts, sort of representing the crown. The Red Dragon also has 10 horns, so 
One, two, three, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Oh. And to top it all off, well, space whales are already a trope of sorts in a lot of media. So perfect. Yeah. But what is its true goal? Well, who knows? But it can't be good. Does it intend to consume the planet? To eat human minds and souls <gasps> like a rapture except you get eaten? It for sure has some sort of connection to that. And looking at it gives humans migraines. Perhaps because that's all it takes for it to start, eating away at your mind and memory. Much like how oh. Chandelure burns away at nearby souls. It eats away at memory and also does that glitchy texture thing, right? Sort of like messing with the game's code. Messing with its RAM. Boom, boom, boom. And RAM. Boom, boom, boom. Or die. <laughs> And then we have what are essentially its generals, UB Harbinger and UB Cavalry, later Ooh. known as Pestilation and Revelon. These two are not unique in their space. Like most of the Ultra Beasts, there are plenty of them in their own worlds. These ones just happen to be the only ones here in Isn't that scary though? Like, that, that's something I've always found interesting about Ultra Beasts. Uh, I've never played Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon or Sun and Moon, but I did watch the anime and I remember there was an episode when Ash had gotten his Nagan Adele or the Poi Pole, right? Um, or maybe it's not when he got it, but when it left. But they got, they went to their dimension and there's, they're literally just crawling everywhere. Like there's so many Ultra Beasts everywhere. And that's kind of scary because Ultra Beasts are really powerful. They're like on legendary level. So the fact that there's like a ton of pestilations out there, that's kind of scary. Imagine going to that universe. You'd probably get rocked. Not me, though. I'm chilling. But, you know, I'm, I'm about that bag. <laughs> That's really cool, though. I've always found the Ultra Beasts very, very, uh, like, scary because of that. They are each based on biblical beasts that arrive in armies in Revelations Chapter 9. Revelon pulls primarily from these armored horse lion snakes, and Pestulation is primarily the... I thought it was a dog. Um... I mean, I, I knew it was a lion with a, a snake tail. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Swarm of locusts with scorpion tails. There are all sorts of ways different people have interpreted the way they look, and this more broad nature of their depiction is why I wanted to picture them as Ultra Beasts, or Pokemon. So let's start with Pestulation. The name clearly references Pestilence, which yeah. is a horseman of the apocalypse, but... This is the only one of them. I knew I wasn't stupid. <laughs> well, eh. I knew I wasn't that stupid. <laughs> them. Pestilence also has a lot in common with locusts in the Bible anyway. Now we mix pestilence with revelation and scorpion and pest and even elation, Ooh. which means happy and exhilarated. And look at that face. Does that look like the face of mercy to you? It yeah. is a poison flying type with the steel worker ability, and it's Ooh. what happens when you flip a scorpion upside down. The big claws are its feet, and the stinger is the head. When referring to these locusts, Revelation says they were not given the power to kill people, but only to torture them for five months. Oh. And the agony they suffered was like that of a sting of a scorpion when it strikes a man. Oh, wow. Men will seek death, but will not find it. Oh, why? They will long to die. But death will elude them. Luxon, this, this is still a Pokemon, mate. You can, you can dial it back a couple turns. It's not too late to go back. <laughs> I don't know. Dude, that was so scary. I turned British, dude. Holy crap. Now, nah, I know there's a lot of dark Pokemon out there. Every time I say something is dark for Pokemon, someone has to bring up Pokedex entries. So I'll, I'll save your time. But uh, <laughs> that's kind of intense, is it not? I guess it is. Same as Pest uh, Lens, though. It's signature move, Adulterate working name maybe horribly poisons the target it's just like the move toxic but stronger oh the catch being this poison damage cannot reduce the opponent's hp to z that literally okay it matters but holy crap in a metagame okay here we go oh he's in a competitive in a metagame that uh this would build like the 2v2s and the weather that is so that is so good all you need is a pokemon with priority i hit my mic i'm sorry but all you need is a pokemon with priority and they can take huge advantage of that but that is such a cool ability holy crap dude you know Loxa has some really cool ideas for some of these abilities and moves Zero. I meant moves. Now, Revelon, Sorry. UB Cavalry. It is based on the horse lion things, which are said to yeah. breathe fire, smoke, and sulfur. 
So here we gave Revelon a rocky body of sulfur too, and made it ground fire type. Mm. Its name combines revel, which means to greatly enjoy oneself, revile, meaning to insult angrily, revelation, lion, and Babylon, a city of great importance in the Bible, and one that is surrounded with lion-related myth. Revelon shoots superheated beams of liquid sulfur from its mouth oh. and its other mouth as well, that one being on the end of its tail. And it gets some of its facial features from Fu Lion statues, and its color palette is even pulled with how Revelation describes the beast's breastplates. Fiery red, cool blue, and yellow as sulfur. Its signature move is Sulfur Beam, a special ground-type attack that has a chance to burn and smells like eggs. <laughs> that, that's what sulfur smells like. But um, that's kind of interesting. We compare Pestilence's and Revelon's ability or uh, signature moves, right? I feel like Pestilence's is way better. I feel like uh, that move should have a guaranteed burn chance just to make it more annoying, you know? I feel like these Pokemon, they're set up to be God tier. So I think that that would be fair, but you know, maybe that's just me. Now the other two Ultra Ooh. Beasts Look at Lamentu, bro. Oh, dude, I'm sorry, Loxon. I'll let you talk in a second. I'll even I'll dial it back for, for you. But holy crap, bro. Look at Lamentu. Look at the way he's stunting, bro. He he said it on his tippy toes. He said, I don't even need to put my foot down for y'all. Y'all not worthy of me. Oh my gosh, the drip. I like Leosis, uh, uh, whatever. Yeah, uh, as well. I like it as well. I like the 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 the, the, the things on the on the tail. Uh, but Lamentu, bro, that mod is sick. Oh my gosh, I need one of those, like in the real games. Now, N now, okay, let's roll it back. <laughs> and smells like eggs. Now, the other two Ultra Beasties are special and one of a kind. Yay! They are You Be Silence and You Be Sacrifice, also known as Leosis and Lamentu. Leosis is a leopard or leopard. More specifically, a male serpapard, a oh. Mesopotamian and later Egyptian mythical beast, essentially a leopard with the neck of a serpent. Strange. And in case you don't know, Mesopotamia is where you'd find Babylon. The serpapard symbolized great power and would often be shown as guardians to the kings and pharaohs. Another mythical leopard is Zhang from China, a large, wise, and mysterious five-tailed leopard spirit Okay, that, that, that thing looks sick, actually. I'm not going to lie to you. With a powerful and magical horn on its head. And we take these mythical beasts and combine them with the biblical beast of the sea, which is depicted as a leopard with seven heads and bear paws. So, Leosis here is water dark type. Cunning Ooh. and mysterious. Sneaky, like a soft flowing stream. Bear-like claws protrude from its paws, and its long serpentine neck allows it to see all around itself silently with ease. And its six serpentine tails each have a mind of their own, though none can even compare to the cruel intelligence of the main head, which oh. also has a single horn. Leosis can disappear into mist and play cruel tricks on others before eating their souls. His signature ability, Soul Passage, grants him the strongest stat change of the Pokemon on your team that fainted just before you sent it out, as he's manipulating and learning from their soul. And his name pulls from Leopard, C, Seance, as it manipulates souls and spirits, and Cease, as in to cease to exist, like you after every aspect of your being is consumed. And then, Lamentu. <laughs> Lamentu is a fate-sealing female lamb ultra beast. It is- Oh, it's a lamb, not a goat. Oops. Kick fire type for Ooh. reasons that I will now explain. She is based on the lambs of Revelation, one in chapter five and the other in- Ayo! What that lamb doing? <laughs> Both technically different lambs, but we're combining their elements. One is a lamb with two large horns and that speaks like a dragon with fiery breath. And the other lamb looks as though it had been slain as a sacrificial lamb and has seven horns and seven eyes. 
And so we gave Lamento two large ram horns and seven eerie looking eyes. Ooh. The red coloration begins at the neck like the sliced neck of a sacrificial lamb. And it also is a color fitting of the fire type. Choosing two- Dude, the, I, I know I've already said it once, but like the actual uh, explanation in the backgrounds for the designs is in the names especially as well. Holy crap, they, they go deep. They go a little too deep for me, honestly. It's kind of intense, uh, but it's, it's cool. Large horns, rather than the seven of the other lamb, was influenced by Lamentu's connection with Ares, the first in the Zodiac, a sheep with two large horns. Horoscopes are used by many to foresee the future, fitting of her psychic type, and she also pulls from Mesopotamia. Mamitu is the goddess of destiny and fate. Not much is known about many Mesopotamian gods and goddesses, actually, and she is one of them. But we do know that she is depicted as a sheep-like human, perhaps a woman with ram horns. And mm. it's said that whatever she decrees is irrevocable, for she is fate. She does not foretell the future, but creates it on a whim. Oh. And so on Lamentu, we also made the fairy goat-like ear tufts <laughs> resemble the way Mesopotamian and Akkadians would depict wings on various creatures and gods. Her name pulls from lamb, lament, which is a passionate expression of grief or sorrow, goat. like mourning the loss of a loved one, and Mamitu, oh. the Mesopotamian goddess. Her signature ability, expiation, will <laughs> trigger when she faints and it heals the next Pokemon you send out of their status con- Oh my gosh, that's such a cool ability! Oh, that's so cool! Dude, okay, nah, high key, game freak, take notes. These are, these are cool abilities for a metagame. This would be sick. First of all, imagine you get a Pokemon burn, or maybe you have like a Pokemon that's um, lead purpose is to set up rocks or whatever it may be. You switch it out with whatever. Uh, and then this Pokemon fates, you can use it as like a sack or whatever. Maybe you can get hazards as well. Maybe this could be the, the, the Pokemon you lead with. I don't know. There's so many things you could do with this concept. Why hasn't this been made? It's literally, it's not a lunar dance right but it's kind of like a heal bell plus wish pass i like that so much it's so cool conditions and 50 percent of their max hp essentially lunar dance but a bit weaker yeah because it's an ability instead of a move as a group these four may be reluctantly working for andromodai reluctantly well yes who wants to end all life on various planets throughout the universe so did they strike a deal they help the whale and in exchange their home worlds are safe? Or are they being commanded by the very parasite that attaches itself to Endromodai? You see, even Endromodai is normally just a spirit whale, perhaps from a higher plane, pure infinity energy, ethereal. But this deep red draconic parasite latched on and hasn't let go, and may never until you defeat it, that is. Easy. And all you really do then is beat that parasite down enough so that the spirit whale can take control of its mind again. And even take control of the parasite. Ho ho, a reversal of roles. <laughs> Which is why it's okay for you to catch it now. It's no longer a civilization eater. It's quite grateful to you for saving it. Yay. Now, you may think that these stakes are too high for Pokemon, but like, what is Ultra Necrozma then? It's gonna eat the sun. That, that, that also ends all life on the planet. I anyway, could do it. Those are the origins of this cataclysmic quartet and related Mon. They are biblical ultra beasts, eldritch abominations, alien Lakemon. Let me know which are your favorites down below. Damn. And also, be sure to check out the artists we commissioned for these because this group of Mon turned out especially cool. Wait, hold on. Let me let me look at that name again. R Gray Wind. I might need to I might need to hit them up, dude, because they they snapped. They snapped, dude. I love the way uh, Pestilation and Revelon look, but uh, oof. I don't know, bro. Uh, nani nani. I, I'm gonna have to message you as well, dude. I need to get I need to get that Lamentu art, dude. Holy crap. Um, but anyways. If you enjoyed, I, th I think we're at the end. Let me let me just Until make sure time, it's the end. You know. Never stop using your, your noggin. noggin. Okay, but is there anything at the end, or are we done here? Yeah, it looks like we're done here.
Okay, yeah, we're done here. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed, you know, just what to do, show the support, like and a sub, it really goes a very long way. Uh, I've been working very hard to try to get daily uploads on all three channels. And uh, I'm finally not burnt out anymore. I finally have the time to do it and I'm excited. So uh, yeah, uh, what are your favorite Ultra Beasts that were shown in this video? Let me know, know down below. Lamentu's definitely mine. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye now.